Hello, dog fans, and welcome to Dog Dial with Josh Miller and Taco Thompson. Dog Dial, the weekly show all about bulldogs, Georgia Bulldogs sports, um, broadcasting on the network of radio stations, and on Facebook Live from Buffalo's Cafe in Woodstock, Georgia, part of the CRM Broadcasting Network. We are here today, and we're going to talk about all things, recap the latest game of the Georgia Bulldogs versus Sanford. Uh, and we're going to recap the game. We're going to talk some good, bad, and the ugly uh, taco about the game and players, positions, a little bit of everything, key performances, injuries, and notes and nuggets. Of course, we're going to do that. We're also going to talk about some other SEC uh, big games and big games and changes and uh, teams that have stepped up as well as teams that have faltered a little bit because there are a few surprising teams right now in this uh, past weekend of games. It's been wonderful to see the, uh, the different teams stepping up and uh, showing their strength in the SEC Here's well. the side here. A good 42-14 to 14 win yes. on Saturday. And but what we first want to do in the opening segment is we have a special guest with us. We do. Okay, we're going to add a special guest. Let me tell you, we have here. Is, we're we're going to introduce. introduce. Hey, guys. Hi, Hi. this is Phyllis. This is Phyllis from Buffalo. Wave to everybody in uh, Facebook. Social, right? social media land. You betcha. Social media. You are, yes, you're li- we are live here in Buffalo's Cafe. Hey, you've never been live before. You've never been live before? No, well, never welcome been to it. Before. This is your debut, and we <laughs> hope you enjoy your, your time with us. We appreciate you having us yeah, here. No, thank you. You are one of the hosts here. Well, uh, I'm at, a server, yes. And server at Buffalo's in Woodstock, and we are uh, certainly thankful that you allow us to be here broadcasting. Hey, to, come you know, over any day. And let's uh, talk about Buffalo's. What's going on here at Buffalo's All today? right. So, I mean, Mondays and Wednesdays, we have all-you-can-eat wings. Uh, those are fourteen ninety-nine. all-you-can-eat wings. We get fries with those as well. Wing bash, right? Yes, wing bash is okay. a great deal. Um, as well as we're doing Kids Eat Free on Tuesdays and a $2 frozen margarita. Awesome. Well, what we're going to do is uh, come back and chat with you maybe a little bit later today. All right. We're going to take a short break here on Dog Dial and talk about uh, the game that just occurred with uh, the Bulldogs and Bulldogs. Let's right. we'll get into that with Taco Thompson and Josh Miller, and then we'll talk about the towards the end of the upcoming game next week. It's going to be a big game against who? Taco? Mississippi State. 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 Yes. Right. We'll, we'll, be right back. we'll be right back on Dog Dial. Stay with us. in the mics. <laughs> all right. We are we'll be back here. All right. Welcome back to Dog Dial here from Buffalo's Cafe in Woodstock, Georgia. I'm Josh Mellon. This is Taco Thompson. We are here to talk about everything Georgia Bulldogs football. And we are going to start off this next segment basically recapping the game against Sanford. Out of Bulldogs versus Bulldogs. Bulldogs versus yeah. Bulldogs. And I think you got some nuggets on that for later in this show. But, uh, 
Taco, let's uh, talk about it. Let's give me a little scoop on what you thought about that game there. Yeah. And give us, let's get the stats right up. Yeah, right a little up game front. preview. I think, uh, first of all, the dogs did what they needed to do against yes. an FCS opponent. And uh, there was no hesitation. Early in the first drive, we have one stalled drive, but then after that, we were rolling. Uh, there was a little bit of hiccup there in the, uh, the second quarter. With uh, with Sanford getting on the board, but then after that the dogs rolled. So uh, a good overall game we saw in the game. Of course, Sony Michelle was given the day off to recover, get ready for SEC action. I think that was uh, a good idea. A good, a good, 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 real good call. And of course, uh, we saw a, a good breakout game for Nick Chubb. He had I think 131 total yards. Most of that came in the first half. And uh, we saw uh, some of the other running backs, though, interestingly, come in with uh, Michelle out. We saw Harrion. We saw Holyfield. Uh, we saw uh, Christian Payne. And we saw Hudson out there. Uh, so you got to see a little bit more of the stable of the Georgia running backs Absolutely. as well. I mean, yeah, to the future, to too. See. Yeah, so, uh, you know, a total offense. And let's go to the quarterback position here a, a bit. Another good, solid game. Close to 60% of his passes was from and uh, connected with, with multiple receivers, Godwin, Godwin being the, the key target. Mm -hmm. But no INTs. We had one fumble on the night, but that was a pursuit uh, fumble, him sweeping out of the pocket. Sure. And, uh, but overall, offensively, I think Georgia showed what it needed to do. Now, you know, we're through the gauntlet of non region opponents. Now we go through the real SEC gauntlet coming up with Mississippi State. Overall, the defense, another good, solid performance. You, know, you What saw kind of grade would you hand out to them? I for we're going to do Bs. B's? It's hard, okay. to, hard to give A's against a lower level opponent like that. Right. But, you know, the other good thing, as you mentioned, is um, before the show is the penalties were down in this game, unlike Absolutely. last game. That is good. So thing. you like to start to see some of those things go away after three games. Sure thing. Season. Yep. We talked about that last week on how this uh, new coaching regime uh, under Kirby Smart will probably be nipping those ailing uh, penalties that we've been known for. Yep. Uh, or the dogs have been known for yep. for several years now, uh, you know, and that has been an Achilles heel. I am sure it was a talk this week about uh, discipline, and it's always good to see the players react to that. I saw some other games where there was some undiscipline still in the season, and, and you just want to try to get that out of your system and play straight-up football and don't lose it uh, with the refereeing. Don't give the referees any cause. To uh, you know, to change the dynamics of the game, but overall momentum was good. I think Coach Smart has a good game plan. I will give credit to our offensive coordinator, Coach Cheney, mm -hmm. who I thought called a solid game. Uh, the balance. I mean, this is what you like to see. You like to see us establish the run game and uh, mix in a few passes, 13, 14 passes, to keep the balance. I thought it was a great. A great overall play calling sure. with personnel, and uh, I, I just don't think there was much wrong in yeah. the in the play calling. I think they uh, spread the offense out uh, a good to a good number of players, and I think that's good to keep uh, morale up, keep teams going, keep the players going, so you keep them uh, fresh with game day actual live activity and hitting, and those backups you know ready for the next man up. You got to be ready at all times, and I think it's important that uh, the Georgia Bulldogs have those people because you never know, and you hopefully not uh, have the injury bug bite, but you never know, and it's good for those guys to get experience on the gridiron yep. between the hedges under the you know the, the big capacity crowds and being able to show that they are ready and they can step up and. We can look towards the future. Well, about, you yeah, know, and, and I think you see the evolution. So, you know, you look at, you know who your number one and number two running backs are. Your number three running back, I think, is clearly mm -hmm. DeAndre Swift. Sure thing. So him make some really good runs. Absolutely. And, uh, well, you know, we know what Holyfield can do. Uh, Harrion also had some really great runs. The guy's got some moves. Mm -hmm. He's shifty. So right now, 
you know, the sneak peek of the Bulldogs is I think you've got to see Swift and Harrion mm-hmm. as the three and four, and they're playing behind a couple of NFL guys. So yes, tough to get some playing time here at Georgia at running back. It is. Uh, however, you know what? I think Kirby is uh, in the offensive uh, coordinator is going to make sure that everyone's getting utilized because we know who the other teams will be uh, scouting and going for and that's important to make sure that we have some other weapons available uh, in the uh, shed, so to speak, that we can pull out, uh, or the Georgia Bulldogs can pull out and be ready with to uh, battle against that tough SEC, as you said, gauntlet coming up. And if you don't have a few weapons stored away and ready to go, and they let those teams know to key in on our one and two guys, then uh, it'll be a tough road. Yep. But I think with uh, extra guys uh, ready to go with experience now, uh, I think that a great stepping stone for going into the SEC conference play. And Godwin, in the receiving core, Godwin has surfaced as the go-to receiver, but you've seen seven or eight. Mm -hmm. You've seen the depth at the wide receiver position at Georgia as well. Mm -hmm. So it's good to see that. You know, one of the things we talked about here is, uh, you know, the the tight end, Nauta, has only been thrown at three times, you got to think that's going to change right. once the SEC schedule Sure thing. Up. Well, yeah. maybe they're trying to keep them healthy. Maybe they're just, because uh, the more you get banged up against these, uh, I guess you could say, these uh, the FCS teams, you, mm. you can have a, a freak or a fluke uh, injury, and that would uh, put them on the sideline for the rest of the season. We don't need that. He will become a, uh, a key target, I believe, for quarterback. Yep. Yeah, for yep. Jake Fromm. So uh, he was for uh, Jake Neeson, but I think he will, once they get on that, dialed in on the same page, I think Nada will also be a key weapon yep. for them. So one of the things, you know, shifting over to the defensive side, I think uh, wh- the only notable concern was you were going against a pass heavy offense against Sanford. Mm-hmm. You know, the rushing, Georgia shut them down to under 50, 60 yards rushing. And then they, uh, they had, you know, Sanford is a good throwing football team. And uh, yeah, the sure quarterback that. was a, is, a, is a great quarterback. We had some pressure from them on defense. We'll talk about specific mm-hmm. players in the next segment. But you, you like to shut down the pass. There were a few places in the defensive backfield that uh, I thought were a little bit exposed, so right. but nothing, you know, no deep passes, no, you know, no glaring mistakes. But I think there is some improvement there overall defensively. Sure. I think we did a heck of a job on defense. So. Well, I'm sure the uh, yeah, and that'll be great uh, game tape, as you can say, and video that the coordinators and assistant coaches on the defense will be able to uh, make. Uh, improvements on. So I think that'll be good, st- uh, again, a good way for them to go into the SEC conference. What we're going to do is I'll take a little break, uh, Taco, and Absolutely. we're going to come back and uh, yeah, we're going to get a little snack here at Buffalo's and talk about some of the good, the, uh, other good, bad, and ugly. Uh, but uh, right now we're going to take a quick break. Uh, we'll still be on Facebook Live. Remember, you can also check in with us on our Twitter handle, at Dog Dial, and also reach out to us if you'd like to during our live, uh, Facebook Live broadcast and at Dog Dial, feel free to send in some comments, some notes. We're also going to throw out some trivia questions a little bit later, too. So stick with us on Dog Dial. We'll be right back.
test one, two. How are we doing there? We're doing good. Okay. Well, let's get back to it, Joel. How about that? Let's okay, do it. let's get back We're in. Ready to go. Here we go. Here we're talking about some, some key performances here. Uh, all right. Three. There's. Go ahead. Oh, a napkin. Um, all right. As I. Uh, didn't I give you a napkin? I did, but I used it and got all wet because the last time, so I'm going to have to put it on the nose. Um, here we are on Facebook Live as I'm enjoying one of those $2 margaritas here, frozen margaritas, a strawberry one today. Uh, but you don't see that, folks, in the uh, Facebook Live world. Uh, it's I guess red. It is red, uh, but it is quite tasty, and I'm enjoying that. So come on down uh, to Buffalo's in Woodstock, uh, Georgia, and Buffalo's Cafe. You get yourself uh, a you couple of those $2 margaritas. Free. See Phyllis. See Phyllis, yeah. You got you got to eat them up standing uh, out front, but uh, we'll get you some wings and we'll get you some sweet potato fries and things like that. Great too. service. Awesome. We love it here. Fantastic. That's why we that's why we're here. Okay. Oh, All right. Let's get back on track and go live. Here we go. Three, two, one. We're going to key performances. Here we go. <coughs> Hello. Welcome back to Dog Dial on the CRM Sports Network. We are here in Buffalo some individual players, but I know we have some more information that we want to get out there. Uh, and if you folks out there in Facebook Live world want to uh, give us a couple comments or your opinions on several of the uh, key performances, please do so. Uh, we're glad to hear from you. Uh, you can go to our Twitter handle at, at DogDial or on Facebook Live. Just type in in the comment section as we're monitoring that throughout our broadcast. Yeah. We won't happen to, yes? Uh, I just have to flip back to it, uh, and then we will uh, reach out and answer any of those uh, questions, comments. We'd love to hear from you. Well, on Facebook you Live. had a trivia question. I do have a trivia question. Let's throw that out in this segment. We're going to throw out a great trivia question. Uh, it's kind of a fun fact, and we're going to reach out to our Buffalo's Cafe waiting man for an answer. You got it. So any uh, folks out there uh, want to be our Buffalo Cafe wingman of the day or wing person or wing woman, whichever you'd like to be, uh, answer this question. You can uh, send it in on our comments page on Facebook Live. What is the most popular or most used mascot in NCAA schools? Hmm. Okay, uh, that is a good one. So we're going to put that out there. I know there's a lot of bulldogs. There are a lot it's of bulldogs. Now, it's dogs versus dogs. Next week, it's dogs versus dogs. It is, exactly. I mean, that's why we had that question, because it is. It's just a, uh, a basically a kennel of uh, football it's games, isn't it? <laughs> but I do know this because I cheated. And looked up the answer. We did, and referred to Wikipedia. So well, you are you are not well, you are not available to win uh, the uh, contest thing. Uh, we have we some. We have, do have some free giveaways. We have a free hat here. If uh, one of our folks here at Buffalo's Cafe would like to uh, participate with our uh, free wings, maybe. Free, well, maybe we could do that. Take some free if, wings. If maybe we'll give them some free wings. We'll be, we'll have that uh, sent over to them if they can answer the question of what is the most. Used or it's uh, not most popular the bulldogs mascot, there, but it's not. It's not bulldogs. the bulldogs. Okay, so we'll give you that clue right now, and uh, you know maybe someone can come up with an answer, kind of like at the trivia nights they have at Buffalo's at the places. Uh, not using your Google phone app. Let's see if somebody <laughs> knows that off the top of their head. Uh, and if anybody here in the uh, restaurant wants to answer that, we have a good crowd here today on sun on uh, this afternoon, and we will be more than happy to. Uh, answer that, uh, let's see if they will get that answer from a local as well let's, as on Let's here. phase into some of the key performances. You you know, let's start in the backfield. We talked about it like Nick Chubb looks like an NFL runner back there. Sure. Uh, from is doing his job. He's not making mistakes, making good decisions back there. As a freshman, it's hard to believe uh, the kid is a true freshman. Yes. So, uh, he's there. You got to give credit to the offensive line. Um, you know there were three touchdown catches, two to Godwin, so mm -hmm. he's our leading receiver. So that's what you have to feature on the offensive side. On defense, I saw more good, solid defense. I absolutely crushed the Sanford run. Mm -hmm. I'd have to uh, give a shout out to Lorenzo Carter. He looks like a gamer out there. He had two sacks and two tackles for loss. 
and probably that was probably through two, two and a half, maybe three quarters. Right. Outstanding performance. J.R. Reed is a great player. Uh, so I like the cornerbacks um, play and uh, DeAndre Baker, specifically him. I thought he was a shutdown corner, made a few good solid tackles out there. And uh, the defensive tackle, Trenton Thompson, I thought was a star out there. Going to, to special teams, I'd have to say our new scholarship kicker, mm-hmm. Rodrigo Blankenship. Rodrigo. Was kicked him out. Goggles, that's my, my son. Uh, Spex, Spex, is that what, that's, that's, uh, what the popular name? I don't know what they are. Specs goggles. Um, oh, those, are, those are prescriptive uh, glasses. Yeah, yes. yeah, yeah, yeah. That fit under a helmet. I remember mm-hmm. I tried that one time and just... Uh, you know, they got knocked all around. It so <laughs> wasn't going to last. Maybe a kicker. Right. Not so bad. Not so bad if you're the kicker, right? It helps to see the goalpost, too. <laughs> and the ball, yes, absolutely. We didn't have to kick a field goal, so that was a good thing. I mean, I think all of ours were TDs. There weren't any... Uh, Some extra points. Any, you know, just all, we were perfect on extra points. He kicked it out of the end zone, I think, six out of six times. Punting was good. So I didn't see any glaring errors in the special team. So good job to the dogs on special teams. Overall, you know, as a team, Bs are the grades that I would normally hand out against. You do what you're supposed to do. Right. You're at an SEC high-level high level conference against a a lower level conference it is a money game for Sanford and Sanford has some very good players they're just not they're not SEC that you got to play with the big and the fast and the strong and in Georgia though it, what's good to see is you got to see some of the depth from Georgia you got to see some of the twos get in and nothing really went crazy when the twos got in I know Sanford sure. did score a couple more touchdowns. Ramsey uh, got back in the game uh, there towards the fourth quarter. So you got to see some of the depth at Georgia, and I'm sure after three games, this is what this is how you want to feel going into your your SEC schedule. So right. you know we're looking at Mississippi State, Tennessee, Vanderbilt, Missouri. We'll talk a little bit more about the dynamics of what's happening, but Georgia is looking very good here in the SEC East right now. Some of that has to do with what else is happening out there, but the play on the field is really what counts. So coaching looks good. Play calling looks good. The head coaching, there's no reduction of penalties. And we're healthy. Mm-hmm. So it, it that, that's the key, I think. Uh, we absolutely need to mention that. Uh, and we can get into that more into the next segment. But or just kind of, I mean, health is everything uh, when you're talking about a, a long football season. And uh, it is. And I think uh, the Bulldogs went into the season uh, coming out of spring and the summer with uh, good health uh, by all of its players, most of the players. Now, of course, there's always going to be some nagging uh, pains and injuries and things going on like that uh, with any and every football team. However, uh, injuries uh, will sideline and can cripple a season if the wrong person gets injured. Eason was walking without a crutch. So, was, I mean, I would I would say that's improvement. I, Is that a key I, performance, I, would you say? That's not necessarily a key performance. Okay. <laughs> but, uh, but he was there, and I think... Uh, I think he'll have a shot to be back out on the playing field when he gets back and ready. Sony Michelle sounds like from hearing from Coach Smart that that he's going to be back. It's good to get him a rest mm-hmm. this early in the season because it's a uh, it's a long road to hoe for the rest of the season. Mm-hmm. Uh, also, Malcolm Parrish, he's been a starter at defensive back for the last two years, and he's got a bone bone issue in his foot and it looks like he got some rest it looks like he'll be back for the opener at uh at mississippi state the sec opener Mm -hmm. next week so yeah the uh the injury bug has avoided georgia so far of course quarterback we're knocking some wood back here okay here at buffaloes there's kind of some wood yeah there you go thank you that's that was uh, I'll set you up for that one. You're welcome. Uh, it's easy. <laughs> well, it was too easy, Zach. I appreciate that. Uh, what about uh, you know? Talk about some uh, coaching performances. Uh, I know we've touched on it. Uh, you've given them a grade. Uh, do you see 
anything with your experience on where these coaches need to go in the next level to make them for the SEC? Well, hopefully, you know, the play calling was uh, was good. I think everybody can can somewhat agree with the game planning there. And the defense is playing with some spirit. That's what you want to see. Mistakes on on both sides of the ball, you know, versus previous weeks, we were able to avoid those. Our special teams play looks solid. So all in all, the coaching, you know, you you have to give Georgia a a B plus. And it's been a long time since you've talked about the fire coming out of a Georgia Bulldogs team. So I Absolutely, I agree. Right now, so okay, um, well, yeah. Um, what we need to uh, do is take a quick break here. Uh, we are back uh, here at Buffalo's Cafe in Woodstock, Georgia. We're going to take a quick break and then come back with some more discussion on Dog Dial on the CRM Radio Broadcast Network. And we will uh, chat some more. And when we come back, we're going to get into, we talked about some injuries and notes already. So I think we're going to cover, uh, start getting into that SEC uh, preview uh, for the next few games. Uh, when we come right back on Dog Dial. So stick with us, folks. We look forward to being here and being uh, interactive with you. So please reach out to us during this break on Facebook Live with any questions, comments, uh, thoughts about the Bulldogs on the last week of their football play. So stick with us. We'll be right back on Dog Dial.
stuff. And we are back on. All right. All right, welcome back to Dog Dial on Facebook Live and the CRM Broadcast Network. Uh, we are in Buffalo's Cafe in Woodstock, Georgia. And, uh, just Highway 92. Highway 92. Come on out and enjoy uh, the wings, the atmosphere, the drinks. $2 uh, margaritas. $2 margaritas on Sundays here, uh, but also uh, some of the other specials. It's a frozen margarita, $2 frozen margarita. Salted or unsalted? I got no salt. Uh, no salt for me in the rim there. Nope, there you go. That's, that's, that's just my preference, but they're making any way you want to a salt guy, too. Yeah, so but uh, definitely. Well, we definitely want to get into a couple quick talks, but uh, make sure you you're listening to us, and if you want to hear a blog, rebroadcast of our uh, program on face, uh, that we're doing here on Facebook Live, so you know, we are, can be found on our flagship radio station, uh, is Real Country Q92.3 uh, WMOQ FM in Athens, Monroe. Make sure you uh, check them out and look for our uh, broadcast there each week. As we is where the Bulldogs I bet we are, are here, I think. It is, uh, and we're talking about Athens, Georgia, not Athens, Greece, uh, but uh, hopefully someone may be over in Athens, Greece, a Bulldog fan is checking us out right now on Facebook Live. So Taco Thompson, say hi to that guy out in Athens, Greece. Uh, maybe he's out there. Here. And uh, maybe we have a few uh, military folks uh, checking in on us uh, from abroad. So if they are on Facebook Live, thank you for your service and everything you do for our country. And we are going to get into a discussion right now about quarterbacks uh, in Athens, speaking of Athens, uh, there was somewhat of a, one could say, a quarterback controversy, uh, a brewing, uh, because once our uh, former starting quarterback, uh, Jacob Eason, is healthy and back up and rolling, the question is, what do we do with, uh, or what does the Georgia Bulldogs do? What does Kirby Smart do uh, with that situation? Do you... Uh, share the time for them, the snaps, or do you go with one or the other? I know it's going to be an evaluation, big test uh, next week for uh, uh, from in going into the SEC and seeing how he does, and that will probably determine uh, what's going to happen down the line. What do you think, Taco, as far as uh, from versus Easton, what's going to happen? Well, I know it's really not a controversy at this point. Easton is hurt. The depth chart says right now Fromm is your starting quarterback and Bryce Ramsey is uh, number two, which Ramsey has gotten to play in a couple of games so far early, and uh, that's a good thing. But, yes, Eason was without his, uh, his crutch at the game. He was there at the game. And uh, let's, let's face it, the, the overall consensus on the two styles, Eason has the big arm. Fromm is the game manager. So, you know, when Fromm misses a plat pass, he may throw it short. When Eason misses a pass, he throws it high and and over the head. So, but so far, I, I like in in the way Georgia is setting up is their defense is really solid, and the the offense has not had to rely so heavily on a comeback situation with a passer. So, really, the question is, you don't know. If Coach Smart and uh, Coach Cheney are looking at this, it's a good problem to have, number one. <laughs> no doubt. You're getting uh, experience from a true freshman quarterback, and, and it's why it's very important for, for these kids to come and roll early so they can participate in the spring sure. drills. That's a big difference of why Fromm is being able to hold in there and hold steady. The game planning looks pretty good. You know, I'm sure they've meticulously looked at how they manage the game plan depending on the quarterback that's in there. Sure thing. But I, you know, if I'm a Georgia Bulldog fan, which I am, I would certainly, when we get a healthy Jacob Eason back, I'd be hard pressed to keep him off the football field. To I, be honest, I, I, is, uh, I can agree with that. I'm sure many of the dog fans will agree. However, there are a few that are just. You know, from everything, yep. uh, and just well, he's a local Georgia it. homegrown product. Easton mm -hmm. was highly touted and didn't come in here right off the bat and show mm -hmm. everybody. It's just the pressure that these kids have to play under when you're SEC no doubt. gamer, and and you're probably, if you're a fan out there, you're probably going to have your favorite, whether it's e Easton or From. You're going to probably fall into one camp or the mm -hmm. other. But um, trust me, they will be mapping that out. Speaking of quarterbacks. Mm. Well, I, that's right. It's a good transition. 
because we do need to talk about the incoming uh, SEC team, Mississippi State, this next game. Wow. And they, wow, what a... <laughs> Wow. Well, what, what a showing they had this past weekend. How about that, huh? Wow. Uh, that was a big game for them, big game for the SEC. When uh, many people thought the SEC might be down across the board, uh, here comes Mississippi State stepping up and uh, showing that they, you know, uh, they are going to fight too. And they are not going to go over easily uh, as many people thought they would. And a lot of that, speaking of, as you said, speaking of quarterbacks, that's going to talk, we need to talk about their Nick quarterback, Fitzgerald. Nick Fitzgerald. So, what do you see from him, Taco? I see a, um, a pretty sharp quarterback. Mm -hmm. You know, when you can go in there, and, and, and I like his attitude, uh, not necessarily as an opponent, but mm -hmm. if he's my quarterback, I like his attitude. I saw a, a post or a quote from from Fitzgerald in, in that big win against LSU, mm -hmm. which now everybody knows a 37-7 win. Right. Fitzgerald was responsible for four touchdowns, two mm -hmm. with his legs, two right. with his arm. But 37-37 wow. against LSU, who was supposed to be under Orgeron, right. the, the coming back, the return from LSU, uh, that's, that's pretty serious competition coming in here. So we've got some work to do. The Bulldogs' defense will face their tough test against Mississippi State coming in here. They put up 37 points right. against a a what was thought of as to be the the front runner to to topple Alabama mm -hmm. up there in the SEC West. You betcha. And uh, they're going to be coming in with a bunch of confidence and just right in the high. And they will be coming in and trying to. Uh, Upset, obviously, uh, I guess you could call it an upset at this point of, of Georgia. I, I don't know the actual split, you know, what well, people are saying. Are they up there or who's favored right now? I'm sure Georgia is, but uh, you never know after that. You don't know, um, and that's why we play them. And, but one, the one quote that I was going to refer to in that uh, previous statement that I was making that Nick Fitzgerald quoted out there in media that, that he nor his team thought it was an upset against LSU. The guy has some confidence. He said, hey, we know we're going to go out there and score some points. Absolutely. So probably the, the Georgia defense is probably going to be a lot more stout than the LSU defense. A lot more returners coming on Georgia a lot more than LSU. Some NFL prospects back there. And so it's going to be a different ball game. But this, uh, this is setting up to be a really, really neat game. We're as far as region and conference play, we're going to talk about you know what's happening in the whole SEC in the next segment. But right now we're O and O. Right, Georgia is, has no conference wins. Right, everybody, you can't give Georgia the title to the SEC East because you haven't played anybody in the SEC. Absolutely, all that's been happening is people have been losing. Georgia beat Notre Dame right. so far. So that, does, that doesn't count towards uh, the SEC. Doesn't count. Doesn't count at all. So we've got um, we've got a plan for a uh, a really dominating defensive performance. So mm -hmm. these uh, these last three weeks have been good. This is your first test of the Bulldogs' defense to see how really good that secondary is. How really good that pass rush can be and to be able to put a stop to a pretty stout offense. Right. Uh, so, boy, it's going to yeah. be interesting. Well, to you know, kind of wrap up this segment, it's going to be a quarterback battle uh, of, of I don't say unknowns, but just uh, between Jake Fromm and uh, Nick Fitzgerald, uh, it, it really it's going to be it's going to be a head-to-head -head, uh, competition. It's going to kind of be like uh, some I don't say some playoff baseball, or just uh, you know the pitchers duel that uh, everyone talks about uh, when you're talking about baseball. Uh, that is uh, exactly uh, what. Um, of the uh, some bosses, some folks here at Buffalo. Sorry about that. That's what uh, is going to happen. Is you know these guys are going to be compared. Their their stats, their uh, their throwing, their technique. Everything is going to be analyzed, if not over analyzed, over the next week and uh, compared out like a pitcher's duel. To it's a statement game teams. for Mississippi State to come in here too. Mm -hmm. So and don't forget, there's a Georgia Bulldog over there. At uh, Mississippi State, coaching the defense, mm -hmm. former Bulldog coach in uh, Grantham. So he mm -hmm. knows a little bit about some of the players over here. He does know a little bit. A little bit about how we play football in Athens. No doubt. Uh, however, uh, you know, it, uh, 
you know, I guess the good thing is it's not under the uh, the same offense of uh, people, uh, <laughs> coordinators and coaches. And so what we'll do is when we come back uh, in just a moment, we uh, you know, talk about some other SEC action and you know, that's going, and uh, kind of wrap up our uh, Mississippi State talk uh, that's coming in. And we will take a quick break here on Dog Dial on the CRM Sports Broadcasting Network and on Facebook Live. Look forward to uh, seeing you here uh, live. Please stick around. We'll be right back. Go dogs. Come back here on, uh, on our broadcast. We're on Facebook Live. Welcome back, folks, on Facebook Live for Dog Dial. I'm Josh Miller, and this is Taco Thompson, and we are going to go back uh, to our live recording in just a moment. All right, welcome back to Dog Dial on CRM Sports Broadcasting Network. We are here in Buffalo. Cafe, Buffalo's Cafe in Woodstock, Georgia on Highway 91 or Wheel Route 91, whichever you'd like to call it here in Georgia. 92. 92, I'm 92. sorry, not 991, 92. 92. Yeah. I'm thinking 91 up north. Uh, one street. Stuff. It's a little bit over, yeah. okay. Yeah. So, yeah, sorry. So, Woodstock, Georgia on 92, Wheel Route 92, or Highway We're 92. On Grand Silver or Phyllis. Phyllis is joining us here in our next segment. Uh, they're talking about uh, we're here at Buffalo's, and she's one of the great servers here. And Somebody, yes, uh, and make sure you ask for Phyllis, maybe. You got her turned up. Turned yep, up. she's up. She's up. We got her microphone okay. on. Are you on there? I think so. Can you hear us? Can okay. Can y'all hear, hear me? Uh, yes, we can. We can hear you. Welcome in. Who, uh, we had a trivia question in our last segment of what is the most popular, most used mascot used in NCAA? NCAA. All the all the and college universities. All the college universities. And we had the right answer from an audience member. Let's see if you can 
answers. See if you know what it is. Well, I mean, of course I want to say Georgia Bulldogs. Well, you want to say Bulldogs? Well, well we did give a note earlier. Bulldogs is a good guess. Yeah, Bulldogs. that's the top five. Bulldogs, 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 Bulldogs is the third. Third. Oh, okay. Bulldogs. So I was almost that's there. That's the segue. You were good. You were good. You were, you were close. I was in the top five, okay? You were in the top five. Georgia top two Bulldogs two. played the Sanford Bulldogs last week. This past weekend. Mm -hmm. And the upcoming opponent is the Mississippi State Bulldogs. So you oh, wow. Bulldogs, E Bulldogs. E Bulldogs. So it's a, yeah, yeah, it's, it's a very doggish uh, part of the schedule. Doggy dog world. That's so good one. I like that. So if you use the dogs, let's talk about something that uh, that flies. That flies? That, that flies. flies. Like an eagle? Hey, hey, there we go. Hey, we got, our, we got a, another winner. We have we a have winner. You want to announce our winner? Yeah, we have uh, actually, uh, prior to you coming on, uh, we did ask, because you weren't here yet, uh, we did ask one of your uh, customers here. Uh, Will is here, a uh, bulldog fan with his son, Miles, and they came up with the answer. Uh, we'd like to hear that Miles... Uh, his son actually said Bulldogs first, but <laughs> Will came uh, as, as Bulldog supporters, but Will came through for us and came up with the answer of Eagles, and that is the most popular right. mascot uh, for NCAA teams and schools, and uh, we are going to reward him with uh, a little something here from Buffaloes uh, a little bit later, so make sure Will and Miles will don't leave us uh, until we talk with you after this segment, okay? So enjoy your wings there, having some wings. What flavor wings are you having over there right now? Medium and Asian. How are those okay. for popularity? Are those some of the more popular Asian ones? Sesame over? is probably one of our popular flavors here. Okay. Asian sesame, uh, red hot ranch is a really good flavor as well. Our medium sauces are fantastic. All of our wing sauces, I think, are. The Asian. wings are fantastic. The wings are fantastic. We've had many of them here, uh, and we look forward to having a little bit. As our wing after. person, as our, we have a wing man. To the Thank next, you. let's talk about some SEC action. Okay, we've got okay. SEC. Okay. So, we have uh, you want to stick around with this, or you want to uh, in, in two bit, or do you have to go check on some new tables? There, it's up to you. Uh, let me go check on these guys, and I can come back. Okay. Well, we'll see you in a few moments. All right. All right. Thanks. Talking right. about mascots and tigers. Mm -hmm. Okay, let's talk about the big one, the Florida versus Tennessee. We've got some Gators. Yes. And we've got some Volunteers. Tough loss there Oof. by the Vols. A good, S solid SEC matchup. The Bulldogs got a, a chance to peek in on the SEC East. Mm -hmm. And uh, Florida, after having lost to Michigan, comes back. And runs okay. it to the wire with a last-minute pass against Tennessee. Heartbreaking loss for the Vols. Uh, it was, uh, a little bit, but a little bit of payback, actually, because yeah. uh, just a year prior to that, it was just the opposite. Uh, it was, so it was kind of a mirror image, if you want to say, uh, where our... Uh, now, where the uh, Tennessee Vols uh, came up with the win at the last second sh uh, showing against uh against Florida as well as against our Bulldogs last year. That was a tough one, right? In the past, they've done that to the Bulldogs. Absolutely. So, uh, hey folks, how are you? Welcome. Uh, we have some more uh, customers coming in here at Buffalo's, but uh, yeah, let's talk about the SEC and what's coming well, up. We uh, talked a little bit about Mississippi State mm -hmm. and uh, LSU and the SEC West matchup. Mm -hmm. So uh, Let's uh, chat about uh, Tennessee. What do you think about Tennessee? Because we got, we got to face them on September 30th. So uh, the Bulldogs are so. coming up after Mississippi State, and uh, this is where we say we, we've got the gauntlet. Tennessee, Vanderbilt, Missouri, Florida, South Carolina. Mm -hmm. That schedule for Georgia starts to look a bit, little bit lighter going to the schedule. You know, mm -hmm. Kentucky beat South Carolina 23-13. to 13. Good A surprise to some. You know, South Carolina is still rebuilding the program, but Kentucky may be there. Mm -hmm. uh, manhandled South Carolina. That's SEC East when you're looking at that. Uh, that does have implications. And South Carolina lost not only the game, they lost their star receiver, Samuels, Ooh, yeah. out for the season. Uh, terrible injury that is a tough hit. to him. So that's some other action. Vanderbilt is 3-0. and 3-0. Oh. and, oh. oh. and Vanderbilt, people are talking about Vanderbilt may be up on the uh, on the top 25 here. Missouri got it handed to them, absolutely handed it to them yes. by Purdue. Ole Miss lost out to a Pac-10 team mm -hmm. at Cal. Auburn uh, against a, a lower level opponent, which is Mercer. They're closer than you might have thought, 24 to 10. Mm -hmm. And Alabama 
the roll tide after the controversy, not controversy, it's just Saban being Saban <laughs> at the yeah. uh, press conference this week about Colorado State. Right. But Alabama rolls against Colorado State 41-23. to mm-hmm. So it's shaping up to be a pretty interesting year. But back to looking at the schedule mm-hmm. and looking at how Georgia's schedule is playing out. Now, big game here at Mississippi State. A lot of people predicting. I've seen a lot of predictions. Georgia now at this point seeing a little bit about what what they've got yeah. is a, a ten and two season. I have them undefeated. Right. So, but you know, let's get to the games. I didn't know Mississippi State was going to be this good. I don't yeah. think many people did. Vanderbilt's going to be a test after that. I mean, mm-hmm. Well, back up Tennessee, Vanderbilt, Missouri doesn't look like it's going to be too tough to handle. Florida's working itself back. South Carolina. Obviously losing to Kentucky. Mm-hmm. Auburn, don't really know who Auburn is yet, but they don't look like they're a contender in the West. No. Kentucky may be a little bit more of a challenge than you think. And always, to close the season, Georgia Tech. So, a right. lot of work to be done. But I, I think what most people would say is that Georgia is solidly in the driver's seat in the SEC East. I agree with you. Uh, uh, and uh, even though the SEC uh, season is yet to kick off, mm-hmm. so to speak, uh, as it is coming up this uh, next game, uh, they appear to be ready to be the leaders and yes. the ones to, as predicted by many of the prognosticators, mm-hmm. uh, to be the team to to watch, to follow, to chase, uh, and uh, if not, to uh, go after and uh, hopefully the team to win uh, the SEC East. So uh, I think that's some good uh, analysis there, Taco. I appreciate it. Uh, you know, I think we will uh, be able to wrap up a few more tidbits uh, at the end of our se- uh, next segment, but we're going to take a quick break here on the Dog Dial Network on CRM Broadcasting Sports Network. So stick with us. We'll be right back on Dog Dial. Go dogs. All right, Facebook folks. Uh, Taco Thompson is up and about. And uh, hey, uh, yeah, uh, JT, uh, you just gave a youngster a, uh, a Crown Royal hat. Uh, that's probably not a good thing. Why don't you see something if we have something else uh, to uh, we can push it to? I tell you what, well, we can hear him there. I tell you what, why don't we talk to uh, Buff- about a minute and a half. Yeah, we'll get to Brian and uh, make sure you take a Frisbee. And make sure you take a schedule there. Uh, we got some uh, schedules there for you. Just put it right on the table there. Thank you, partner. Uh, and there's some uh, Georgia Bulldog schedules you can take uh, take one with you. Put it up in your room. That's a great-looking uh, schedule. Uh, thanks to Buffalo. Miles, come on over here and be on Facebook Live. Just wave to the camera. Yeah, come on to this side. Uh, you can say hello. You're on Facebook. Uh, make sure you get, go to Facebook. If you're on Facebook, you can check them out on. Where's it'll be, we're getting, you want to get the headsets right behind you? There you go. Set that behind you. Oh, right, dude, come on. Put that headset on. Hey, we can talk with us. Okay. Say hi on the radio. Hey. You're hello, there you go. Our yes. winner of our uh, guest for the mascot, the Eagles. The Eagles. So uh, his dad is checking in right now. Uh, you'll be able to look on this uh, later today. It'll be uh, uh, 
saved into uh, Facebook on Dog Dial, and we'll be able to look it up. Uh, I'm not sure if you have a Facebook page. Not too many of the youngsters do, but uh, you know, make sure you. Uh, send us a Twitter uh, note on uh, at dog dial or something you know, if you want to. Uh, to give us a little shout out I'd appreciate that right when you get going if you uh, got yourself a Twitter handle uh, say that you were here and come back uh, and tell your folks and friends to come back on uh, next Sunday because we're here every Sunday okay. to uh, wrap this up between 4 and 5 o'clock give us a go, do go dogs go dogs hey. all right there you go thank you sir thank you. thank you appreciate it man good job all right and uh, we're we'll time on radio. Now, now Facebook Live, right. man, you, you, you're a natural. He's on radio. I got that. Thank He's you. Guy. All right, last segment. Let's last segment. Here. If you can go to that, Let's get it. Let me get, get this in here. Yes, we're going to wrap it up right now. So give me a little time. Um, we'll go back on. I'm just going to mention. Uh, we'll do a read in. We're going to do this for the podcast. Okay. Ready? Don't forget all this down here. Yeah, well, I'm going to do that at the very end. First, right. I want to mention this first. There you go. All right. Okay, and uh, welcome back to Dog Dial on the CRM uh, Sports Radio Broadcasting Network. Uh, we are here in Buffalo's Cafe in Woodstock, Georgia on 92, as I'm staying corrected from the last time I wrote Highway 92. We're out High 92. Uh, and come out and check us out. We are here uh, on Sunday afternoons uh, from... Uh, four to five. You want to come check out uh, broadcast? You never know when you're going to get you on. Never know when here. That's what we're hearing today. We have you never know. guests on the radio. We have. Uh, I'll say we'll put you on if you want to come out and have some tennis. comments and uh, some feedback on uh, the Bulldogs. We'd love to have you. We got some more folks here. Looks like someone over here celebrating a birthday. Whose birthday is it over there? Okay, your name? Colby. All right, Colby. Uh, and Coleman. Coleman, okay, Coleman. Coleman. Coleman, Coleman, right? All right, he's enjoying a birthday here. And her birthday and, as well? And Terry. She doesn't and want Terry. Oh, she's one she doesn't want that birthday. We won't mention, but, uh, <laughs> but thanks for coming out to Buffalo's. Got mentioned anyway. All right, but uh, if you want to, uh, folks here and on uh, our show can always check out for a podcast of today's show or any of our nearly 250 episodes of Dog Dial, please simply go to iTunes and search for Dog Dial in the podcast section. So you can check us out uh, live on Facebook Live, also on podcasts in the iTunes uh, library. Please check us out. You can also email us some feedback or anything at Georgia at CRMSports.com. So Taco Thompson is my partner in crime here, and uh, we have gone over basically the good a recap in the last game, the good, bad, the ugly, some key performances from last week. Things look good for the Bulldogs all in all. I think no, that's, three and oh. three and oh. that's where you want to be. Yes. Three games played, three wins, and now the uh, the tests get tougher. Yes. Say. Yeah, I agree. Uh, the semester uh, for the students is getting tougher, and same thing with the football team. Curriculum. <laughs> it is. They are now knee deep into their uh, into the heavy tests that are coming up, and we uh, hope that they will do well, and we think they will. So what we uh, want to do is make sure that uh, these folks get know. Some wings. Yeah, it's time to go get some wings. Right. We can come back, but uh, make sure you uh, check us out. We are here at uh, Buffalo's Cafe in Woodstock, and we are here. Uh, in the afternoon, if you want to come check us out live, just stop by Buffalo's and see our schedule or for our broadcasts. You can join us, uh, be in on our, uh, our questions, our trivia. We're handing out some great items. We have some uh, wonderful giveaways from Buffalo's. I thank Brian and all the, the manager and owner, and as well as his staff that have been great hosts and servers here for us. A wonderful place to come out with your family, as well as your friends for a beverage or just a great family outing uh, here at Buffalo. So, what I would say is just uh, you know, a couple of things. Before we go, the executive producer of Dog Dial is John Wall. The uh, co-host for me, I'm Josh Miller. My co-host is Taco Thompson. A special thanks to our server guest today of Phyllis here at Buffalo's, one of our servers, as well as Miles, uh, coming on for his, both of their inaugural uh, radio broadcast, Facebook Live broadcast. They did a great job. Thank you to them. Uh, I'm Josh Miller saying thank you for listening. This is Dog Dial production of CRM Sports. For more info, visit CRMSports.com. Go dogs. We'll see you on Dog Dial. <laughs>